Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Break It Dawn. Let's check out the Scriptorium. Look at this place. Archimir's library is a footnote to the glory of this collection. One of Aeora's greatest wonders, and it's infested with eyeballs. Lovely. I've got it. Scribble note marked redacted. Was the hand born here? Is this its truest form? Or has the womb gone cancerous? How may I help? Hmm? Keeping quiet. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's actually out of range. Indeed. I will right, we'll avoid the chief librarian for right now. Will do. The plaque on this display reads Helder's Inheritance. Dim in the lantern. Uh, if I must. Note on a regretful sabotage. At your request, I paid a visit to our friend S and adjusted his charts. Your suspicions were correct. He is, was, on the verge of a breakthrough discovery. I hate to spoil a man's career like that, but the greater good demands that certain islands remain uncharted. Smart fellow. We felt so inclined, we could turn him to our side. We might think twice if he knew about this little setback. His dog is friendly as ever. That's our buddy that we were charting the archipelago for. Whether it's sealed by machinery or magic, there's no moving this door. Yet. Greetings, visitor. This is the scriptorium. A woman, Harper features nothing more than an ill-defined smear of skin, bows her head to you. Her angular jawline and the pointed ears within her cowl resemble those of an elf. If you seek the Temple of Revelation, you will find it to the north. Will in hand, the Skelter Folk, if that's what she is, makes a quick note in a small leather-bound tome. We came for answers, not directions. Are you the abomination in charge here? The librarian does nothing beyond adding a quick line item to her ledger. Why do you think I'm going to the Temple of Revelation? Because you must. It is entry and exit. Do you mind answering a few questions? Ask what you seek. The people here. You all seem a bit preoccupied. The scriptorium was recently breached by one of the subjects from the collections. There is nothing to be concerned about, but it might impact the demeanors of those present here. How else might I help you? The escapee you mentioned from collections. I don't suppose it was a masked wizard. Perhaps. If the wizard has procured a mask for himself, did you encounter him? She pauses. Will perched above her pages. Briefly, can you tell me anything more about him? I'm afraid not. The woman jots a few more notes in her journal. The individual in question's record has been expunged. He no longer exists. A wizard of his standing is not so easily removed from history. Much like a tumor, bits of him are no doubt everywhere. Postenago, it doesn't work that way. Records, ledgers, all of this is just scribbles, an expression, not the thing itself. I am seeking an Archmage named Mara. She generally limits her excursions to the Archives, though she was recently working at the Trephine. She gestures towards a strange device to the south. She respects our work. 
so the Oracle allows her limited access to the Archives and Scriptorium. They have established an accord. You hear this? Never trust an Archmage. They will conspire with anyone or anything if it serves their interests. Who is the Oracle? The Oracle of Wal. They manage the halls in the name of he who sees and is not seen. Can I speak to this Oracle? If the Oracle wishes to commune with you, they will do so. Are you in charge of this place? Of the Scriptorium, in a manner of speaking. Of the Halls Obscured? No. That would be the Oracle. You seem like the person to ask about the Halls Obscured. I will provide what answers I can. What do you do here in the Scriptorium? We record what occurs within the Halls. She gestures to the scribbling scribes. Whereas the wings contain those things redacted from the world above, the scriptorium keeps the history of the halls themselves. What can you tell me about the archives? The archives contain the sum whole of the historical record of Aora, both the original drafts and the edits. Take care that you do not confuse the two. I have my doubts about the quality of a blind librarian's record keeping. Vecina crosses her arms. Further, they contain a number of unusual and interesting artifacts. I believe that we are in possession of one of the warrior Riona's boots. Jodi and Adair exchange quick, confused glances. What's the purpose of the collections? The collections store those individuals and creatures determined to be detrimental to Aora and the work of the gods. Rather than allow the redacted materials to go to waste, we revise and anthologize, occasionally releasing amended texts. Is this the center of the Hand Occult? A womb, perhaps, but not the fetus. The Hand Occult no more possesses a center than Well does. Even their organization has tentacles. No matter how many limbs we cut, there is always something unspeakable to grow in its place. How long has Mara been coming here? Decades. I would have to consult the records to provide a more precise answer. Her interest lay in the arcane applications of the Titan. The Oracle has determined that her studies benefit well. This Oracle would not have approved of Maura unless she had something to exploit. Sina narrows her eyes. That is hardly comforting. Aloth chews on a knuckle and frowns. Back to my previous questions. She bows her head. How else might I help you? The stuff on the walls. I assume that's connected to the body of Wild. The Titan rests beneath the facility. Its ties to the Halls Obscured have grown extensive over time. Is it dangerous? Of course. As are you. As am I. Those of us who can see where we're going have a slight advantage over you, Sere. Farewell. Worth a look. Oh? How nice. does one possess the time to collect this many fish? Ab. Huh? I'll be your lookout. Oh? I've read that before. I believe we've read this before. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and read it anyway. On the provenance and ruination of Nekataka's old city. Excerpt from a lecture given before the annual convention of the Academy of Architectural Historians in Adir. 
Post-examination by learned parties suggests that Nekataka is significantly older than it might at first appear. We take as our example the separating wound in the city's side, which the locals most charmingly refer to as the gullet. On its face, it is not considerably different from your average slum. Indeed, it contains all that one might expect of such a place. Desperate poverty, wrenching hunger, a tavern fair brimming with miscreants, and a flourishing criminal culture. Of course, it has its own unique offering as well. A towering pile of garbage dumped into the district, and the more affluent neighborhoods above it. It is, in every sense, abominable. The Juana leadership should be ashamed. But I digress. Far more interesting than the caste stratifications among the Juana are the bones their city is built upon. For beneath the gullet lies a vast cavern littered with the remains of an ancient city. Referred to simply as the Old City by the denizens of Nekataka, the sunken metropolis is notable for two reasons. The Old City's architecture is markedly different in style, form, and apparent use from the architecture of modern Nekataka, and there is no readily available explanation for the Old City's destruction that has not already been considered and discounted by those inclined to study it. My peers here in the Academy, and beyond, believe that the Old City's destruction is clearly the fault of the region's energetic volcanism and subsequent tectonic rumblings. I would caution against grasping at such an easy solution at such easy solutions, however. Consider the following. The Juana have lived in the region for thousands of years. Earthquakes are no more a surprise to them than are the archipelago's daily soaking rains. None in Aeora match their sheer creativity and expertise in building to withstand these events. Moreover, for all their flexibility in building construction, the Juana's tastes have proven to be remarkably stable over time, so a clear preference for designs that mimic the rhythm and shapes of the natural world. The Old City shows none of these things. Indeed, what remains was constructed primarily of stone cut in austere blocks, and the buildings are arranged in a manner not dissimilar from those prevalent in the Inguithin ruins that dot the landscape. With those two points in mind, does it not seem prudent to ask whether the old city is Juana in origin, and if it is not, who built it, and finally, what destroyed it? Recently written note. Everything shook. How long have I been down here? Too long and long enough, yet that's not occurred before. Now things move in the darkness. Things watch. Something's changed. Oh, of course. Let's go turn in our quest to Tain. An uneasy feeling comes over you. You realize that your pack is quivering, gently, but insistently. Pretend you don't notice it. As you press on, a slimy appendage extends from your pack and softly caresses the back of your neck. Among your gear, an eyeball slowly opens, then another, then another, then another. Something pokes its head out and opens its tiny jaws, revealing a row of pointed teeth that lets out a triumphant chirp. Aren't you just an adorable little monstrosity? The creature runs its tongue across its teeth. It chirps again before diving back into the warmth and safety of your peck. Hey, it's looking at me. And also at you. <laughs> Retina. Oh, it's a pet version of that creature we saw in collections. A plus one enemies needed to flank. This moist deviance of nature looks up to you with a starry-eyed adoration. Little Retina does not seem aware that it's a twisted parody of evolution, a self-perpetuating engine of nightmares. For the time being, it's content to be your friend. Retina gets a broad view of its surroundings whenever it opens its arms for a tiny hug, which is often. I have plus five accuracy against distant enemies. While Retina is following the party, an additional enemy is required to flank you, and the party has increased range accuracy. Yes, of course.
Well, that's always a promising sign. I'd like to go back. That side is also blocked off. Table to discussion for a second, Len. It seems the collection spat out our mutual friend in one piece. Hang glances past Len Groff, a smile pleasantly at you. And it spat you out with company. The prisoners who survived the ordeal can start anew. Aora needs more good ideas out in the wild, don't you think? Have you made any headway in locating our wayward archmage? Lengroth leans forward, eager for news. I haven't found Maura yet. Maura is tenacious and reckless. She won't hesitate to unleash horror upon the world if it would serve her purposes. And she won't stop until she's secured her goal. I encourage you to hurry. While you were on Maura's trail, we learned a bit more about our unusual environs. Certainly not from exploring them himself. How much can he learn from the lobby? A finger of the Hand Occult has kept this place going with a skeleton crew of librarians, archivists, and muscle. But they aren't the ones controlling the body. Something else is running the Halls Obscured independently, and doing a decent job of it. Your definition of what constitutes decency is dubious at best. Well, these Halls are more lively than most of the abandoned sanctums I've visited. The collections weren't short on prisoners, or a means of controlling them. Something here is invested in maintaining old projects. Whoever they are, they haven't seen fit to show their face. Stay on task, Tane. Regardless of how interesting this Sanctum's keepers may be, Maura's whereabouts remain our chief concern. I've learned what I can from the collections. Next, to the archives. Given Maura's proclivities, your best option is likely to be... Lengrath continues to speak, but you lose her words in a sudden rush of essence. Energy tears your attention toward a disturbance in the center of the antechamber. Not a disturbance, a presence. Anyone else feel this? I remember you. Freedom is long overdue for those poor wretches in the collections. Now they're leaving the nest, ripe with ideas and new potential. He sighs and wipes away a proud tear from the corner of his eye. Oh, my little thought bombs are all grown up. I might have guessed you didn't do this for charity's sake. Of course I did. This was for everyone. Don't you know that? Payne's brow creases. The Hand Occult uses this place to rewrite history, obscure the truth, and spin fiction into reality. Now, we've turned their own weapons against them. I wrote a fringe benefit into our spell. The prisoners who knew too much might feel extra talkative once they return to society. Secrets which the Hand wanted obscured will be brought to light. All it took was sipping a few motes of power from Wal's body. Tain studies his cuticles in size. Should we expect any side effects? Definitely not. Extremely unlikely. I suppose anything's possible. Don't act so surprised. I did warn you. She sighs deeply through her nose. No need to be glum. Whatever scheme the Hand of Cold wanted to accomplish here, we've set it back. What kinds of secrets could these prisoners have? All kinds of secrets. Wars that should or shouldn't have started. Scandals. The kinds of things you learn from peering through the wrong keyhole. Not knowing is the real fun of the thing. What makes you think the hand scheme was nefarious? I'm not saying it was. Theirs might be a carefully organized plan to steer us toward a better future by embellishing some facts and obscuring others. Can you say you've met a single person who deserves that kind of authority? I sure can't. And I'm tame. He smiles and shrugs. Just once, I'd like to do someone a favor without changing the world. Occupational hazard. You should consider early retirement. Hanging up the old cloak. Maybe get yourself a nice castle. Oh, right. 
Sorry. I found these beauties tucked away and thought you might give them a good home. There were more at first, but I lost a few to a juggling accident. Tain passes you an armload of volatile explosives. The Hand Occult manages the halls obscured, correct? I'd be surprised if most of the Hand even knows that this place exists. They want the world to think they write travel guides and circulate pamphlets of local history. It gets shady when you read past the margins. Things don't always add up. Not even the Hand could tell you which facts they edited for convenience's sake, which ones they spelled out, and which ones they spelled wrong. And this could be where it all happens. How do we separate facts from the Hand's version of facts? That is a head-scratcher. Hain scratches his head. I suppose the solution is to be skeptical. You have to ask yourself, how much do you trust anything in a book? Does a story become more true because someone paused to write it down? I should really charge for discourse this engaging. Bostonago, you couldn't pay me to listen. If we're to be indulging outsized egos, I'd rather listen to Isilmir's prattle. What's the hand's objective? If they ever had one, you can bet they've changed it a dozen times over the years. Anyone who wants to control information on that scale wants to engineer society. Whatever they plan on doing with that power, you can bet they'll lose control over it in the end. You don't keep something like a society constrained to just one vision. Len Groth, what do you think of the Hand? Some speak of the Hand Occult as hyper-competent masters of four-dimensional Hazatoa, when they know of them at all. In truth, the Hand's operations are haphazard and ill-executed. We know they exist because they inevitably leave evidence of their work wherever they go. That they succeed in spite of themselves is hardly evidence of the Hand's competence. Hatzelhat, an experience with the Hand Occult. Amateurs. Time and again their agents showed up at my doorstep and wormed their way into my confidence, hoping to sabotage my research. I sent them home with bags of their own teeth, as a parting reminder that my time is precious and my patience thin. Back to my other questions. Ask away. You know me. I'm an open book with plenty of pictures. Tain hooks his thumbs into his pockets and smiles. So you freed those poor souls held captive here. Your soft heart will hurt them more than my spell ever could. What will become of them, I wonder? I doubt if Tain has any intention of providing for their care when they return to society. <sighs> well, there's no undoing what you've done. I pray the Pallid Knight grants them peace when they eventually hobble through her door. With a world-weary sigh, she turns away. So, you discovered the Circle's favorite crank in the collections. What a curious turn this has all taken. I'm curious about you. Let's sate your curiosity, then. What does it mean to be Lengroth? To be many within a single vessel. I, we, are the distillation of generations. Each successive Lengrath reinvigorates the whole and saves us from festering. When I turn my gaze inward, when I look upon the past, I do so through my predecessor's eyes. When any Lengrath dies, that person ceases to be, as it is when any kith's life ends. Yet Lengrath endures, now and always. The self is little more than an amalgamation of memory and feeling that informs the disposition of the soul. It doesn't alone define it. Given that understanding, I suppose what she describes is not entirely impossible. Aren't you angry that I killed you? Well, the other you. Should I be? The former Lengrath died knowing that what she learned would survive her. Few have that privilege. Though if it's all the same to you, I'd prefer you not kill me. Or at least, let me write my apprentice first. Uh, well, I didn't really have that expectation. I don't really like either of these options, but I want to skip them. Uh, I expected your thoughts on death to be a bit more radical. Then you haven't been paying attention. He chuckles. Among archmages, embracing the wheel's turn 
is the radical position. What a refreshingly mundane point of view. That's all for now. Very well. As you approach the pool, an unpleasant weight grows in the pit of your stomach. It feels like the moment the floor gives out beneath you, just before the plunge, but somehow suspended in time. A sensation like static electricity tingles across your skin. A whirling vortex of essence twists within the pool. It does not stir the water around it in the slightest. Langrath and Tain watch you from afar. The latter's expression bright with undisguised curiosity. Langrath's countenance, on the other hand, remains characteristically guarded. Examine the vortex. Its cold, dusky energy feels somehow familiar. But you're unable to identify it, or what might be causing it. Don't suppose any of you know what this is. Looks like water to me. Tain reaches in and splashes you, oblivious to his hand disturbing the vortex. Unusual arcane energy emanates from the pool. If the Watcher can see it, I suspect it's some form of window into the Divine Realms. Lengroth frowns. Th that was my second guess. Tain smiles at Lengroth. Feels real old and quiet, Watcher. Like a doorway to an ancient tomb. Jody chews on her lower lip. You see something there? Then it must have to do with the fabric of reality. Or else you have eaten something which did not agree with you. Vecina shrugs. You think maybe it's the soul of some fish? Hey, Watcher, fish has got souls, don't they? Adair rubs his chin. Everything living has a soul, fish included. Yeah, of course they do. Well, easy to forget that sometimes. Good to be reminded, though, of everything we're fighting for. Well, maybe not everything, because the Hollowborn didn't. So the Wicks didn't either. He grins. Uh, reach out to the Anomaly. It reaches back towards you. Tendrils of soul energy interlacing with the prodding edges of your own spirit. The coils of essence tighten, grasping at your soul, pulling at you as you've pulled the souls of others. Your vision blurs as the in-between leaks into your perception of the here. The walls, the pool, everything of the Temple of Revelation runs like water, sloughing away and melting into the empty blackness of the in-between. Not quite empty, no. The fleshy, undulating tendrils of the body of Wow remain. Almost a glow in the darkness. The entity's presence presses against the edge of your mind, of your soul resolving into a soundless voice in the back of your head. You see, but are also seen, as is your trespass. Uh, you think you can see us? <laughs> <laughs> ah, another involuntary invitation to another world. And I'm to assume this eyeball is to blame? Certainly ain't the kind of eyes a gal wants to get lost in. Do not listen to this walking nightmare. It is an illusion baiting us to lunge at shadows. What are you, interloper? Uh, that's true. Yeah, she didn't ask who am I, she asked what am I. A watcher, a ship captain, a killer of monsters and finder of treasures. Obviously. Well, what the heck? That is not the knowledge we seek. You intrude upon the resting place of WoW and soil these collections with your filthy fingers. Yeah, I guess we haven't washed our hands in a while. We would know. Are you one more wizard in pursuit of unearned power? Or something other? Only what I said before. Monster Killer, Captain, Treasure Finder. 
your modesty intrigues, but only in its obfuscation. You have proven yourself a murderer and a thief. I did say killer and treasure finder. I never specified if the treasure belonged to someone beforehand. We cannot allow you to enter the body, nor to visit harm upon it. Your destructive trespass within these walls cannot be forgiven. Farewell. Well? We'll fight the Oracle of Wild next time. For now, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.